I think my wife cheated on me, but I have no proof. Married less than a year, both in our mid-twenties. She got concert tickets for Christmas. Naturally, I assume I'm going with her. Nope. She wants to take someone from work because he is supposedly a huge fan of the band. She also tells me he's gay. I am upset, but I decide to not start a fight about it. She goes to the concert and they wait outside near the band bus after the show is over. The bassist from the band starts to talk to her and she flirts with him. He asks if she's going to go to their New Year's Eve show, which is 200 miles away. She says no because she can't afford it. He said he'll comp her tickets if she comes. She says she won't go alone. He says she can bring a friend. Now our New Year's Eve plans are ruined because there's no way I can go too. She had joked before about having to sleep with the bassist for these tickets and VIP access. I did not find it funny, so she played it off. In the end, this is her favorite band, and I don't want her holding this over my head for the rest of our lives, so I let her make the decision herself. She decided to go with her friend from work, who she says now she's only 80% sure he's gay? What? She texted me on the long drive there. Then when she gets the tickets, then nothing. I text her at midnight. She gives me a three word response. I don't hear from her again. I call her at 1130 the next morning and she says she's waiting at the subway station to go back to her hotel. She eventually gets home at around 430 PM. I asked her how it went. She says they partied all night. She took prescription drugs and drank a lot. She said she was pissed that she paid for a hotel when she only slept in it for two hours. I asked how that was possible when she was at the subway at 11.30 a.m. She admits that she didn't use the hotel room at all and that she must have slept in the band suite. What? She blames her amnesia on a hangover. Fast forward a day or so, she gets out of the shower. I noticed she shaved her pubes. I ask her when she did it, she says Friday. Here's the thing, my wife never shaves her pubes. When she does, it's a present for me. She left for work and I found a package of Summer Eve's feminine wipes in her overnight bag. Here's the thing, I've always secretly thought she's had an odor problem, but she's certainly never done anything about it for me. This was a brand new pack, why did she have them? So, what do you think? Is she cheating with the bassist or the other guy from work? Should I confront her about it? Edit. Sorry, this is such a horrible read. I'm literally shaking as I'm writing this since I don't know what to do. Edit 2. This is a screwed up situation for sure, but I should mention there's a reason we got married. She and I share an affinity for so many things from music to gaming to trees to other nerdy stuff. Some people might consider us a couple that spend too much time together. The sex life has cooled off a bit, but neither of us has been left wanting. Not sure if any of this changes things. Edit 3. I think I should clarify that she got the concert tickets as a Christmas gift, but the concert was not on Christmas. The first concert was on December 30th. The second was on December 31st. Edit 4. I'm trying to avoid keywords that might lead her to this thread, so I won't name the band. It's not Nickelback and it's definitely not Fish. Edit 5. She'll be home soon. Wish me luck. Update on the same post. I sat her down last night for a talk. I asked her to walk me through the night so I could better understand the details. They had tickets waiting at will call and were able to stand in the VIP section for the concert. The bar was open until about 2 a.m., at which point they were invited to the band suite. The hotel gave her free pajamas, so she wasn't wearing her dress when she went up there. It was a pretty large party with the bassist, guitarist, cellist from the opening band, and the entire road crew. She said her friend from work was hovering around her all night to the point of being annoying. She said she fell asleep on the floor of the living room, as did a dozen other people. Her coworker woke her up at around 11 and they went to the subway. I asked her why she shaved. She says she doesn't know. What if I end up going swimming, she said. Did you bring a bathing suit, I asked. No, she said. Not to mention the fact that my wife can't swim. She'll drown in six feet of water with nothing to hold on to. We enjoy hot tubs, though I still wouldn't have been comfortable with her in a hot tub full of strangers. I asked her about the Summer's Eve's cleansing cloths. She admitted they were for feminine odor, but said she bought them during our last Walmart shopping trip, which was the day after Christmas. If that's true, she couldn't have known she was sleeping out with me on New Year's Eve. She said she didn't even open them. When I checked the package again, I was positive it was unopened. I asked her to look me in the eyes and swear that there was no kissing, cuddling, or sexual contact of any kind. She did so, repeating those exact words. I also told her how hurt I was about the whole situation. I told her that if she has tickets to something and I want to go, she's obligated to take me no matter what. 
If she isn't ready to make that call, then she wasn't ready for marriage. She was very resistant and used a lot of hyperbole in the conversation. You always this, I never that. The most hurtful thing she said to me was that if I was able to go on New Year's Eve, she thinks she wouldn't have had as much fun. I told her that is a fundamental blow to our relationship that should call our marriage into question. She said I was being ridiculous. So I'm pretty much right back where I started. Still not sure if she cheated. It's possible she lied. I have no way of knowing. She's acting pretty much normal at home, as if nothing happened. I still don't know what to do. I'm going to leave this up for another day or so, then take it down so she doesn't see it. Any suggestions other than dumping that lying, cheating woman would be very much appreciated. And the general summary of the comment section is that people think she is definitely cheating. And even if she isn't, something big is wrong, and the relationship is on the rocks. Also, some comments are trying to figure out which band she may or may not have cheated on him with. Update. Last week, the bassist guy texted my wife and invited her to a concert in a city 100 miles away on a weeknight. She wanted to go, by herself, and I brought up the events of New Year's Eve. She stopped talking to me and gave me the silent treatment for three days. I went on a business trip over the weekend and kept in touch with her every day. When I got back, we spent Valentine's Day together. Yesterday, I was on Reddit and saw that I had a notification. I clicked on it only to realize that my wife was still signed in on my computer. She used her account for Gone Wild, which I knew about and supported. But what I didn't expect is that she was sending photos to guys via PM. I continued reading, and one guy asked, What's the wildest thing you've ever done? And there it was. She responded with, On New Year's Eve, I had my first threesome with a member of a famous 90s rock band and a friend. The first thing I did was speak to a lawyer about my options. Then I confronted her about it, and she said it was only half true. She said she embellished, and that her friend really is gay, and she and the bassist made out and did oral. That's when I left the apartment and headed straight for the hospital to get tested for STDs. I got back several hours later, not believing a word she said. I told her to text the guy simply asking, did we have sex? And if he says no, I'll believe her. She then admitted they did have sex. My whole life has been shattered. We were married for less than a year, and I invested my whole being into this five-year relationship. I moved into the second bedroom, and I'm sleeping on a futon. Our lease goes until May. I just wanted to update Reddit, since I know people rarely do that. And thank you for being there for me before. I'm in the South Jersey slash Philly area and could use some love. Later in the comment section, OP reveals that the person his wife cheated on him with was with the bassist of the band Third Eye Blind. From the time of the post, the changing members of the band, and considering that this was on tour at the time, this means that it could have been one of three musicians. Update 2. Four men. She had an affair with four different men over the past five months. The first was a guy from work that she started sexting and sending racy pictures to back in October. Then she met a random guy at a concert and kissed him. She met up with him again and when she was at a drive-in movie theater with a friend where allegedly nothing happened except cuddling. She met up with him again when she was at a gay club with some friends and he screwed her from behind in the bathroom. He drunk texted her a month later. They fought and broke off contact after that. One night in mid-December, I came home from work at 6 p.m., knowing that she got to done at 2 p.m. for a company Christmas party. Her pet bunny was out of its cage and running around the apartment. She was nowhere to be found. Her car was in the parking lot. Her coat was on a chair. I called her phone and it rang from the couch. I called my mom in a panic. I ran around the apartment looking for her. I screamed her name. I even checked the damn dumpsters, expecting the worst. When she came home an hour and a half later, the police were in my living room, and I was giving them her description. I held her so tightly. I was so scared that something had happened to her. I was in tears. A minute earlier, she was making out with the guy from work, in his car down the street, with her hands on his you-know-what. If she wasn't on her period, she would have sex with him. Then, there's New Year's Eve. The bassist guy likes it up the rear. When my wife and her gay friend went up to his hotel room, he asked him to screw her up the rear. He did, with my wife in the room, and then the guy told him to get lost. 
He then had unprotected sex with her, with possible vaginal insemination. She took the morning after pill and had a pregnancy scare when she was late for her period. They continued to chat via text, email, video chat after that. Finally, she had an emotional affair with a guy she met on Reddit. They flirted via text and email and made plans to meet in person and have sex while I was on a business trip last weekend. <sighs> A friend of mine asked her if she wanted to do LSD together, and she found that that would be the better option. As far as I know, she never met the guy. She continued to flirt and chat with three of the four men up until last Wednesday when I found out. I only found out about the other two yesterday after I invaded her privacy and found tons of emails and chats with and about these men. I forwarded these emails to myself. I even have the t-shirt that my wife slept in that belonged to the bassist. She actually brought it into our home. I know this doesn't count as verification, but here is a photo of the t-shirt and of my hospital bracelet from where I got screened for STDs. I could never hurt myself or take my own life, but believe me when I say I wish I was dead. I wouldn't wish this pain on someone I hate. I'm weak, I'm exhausted, I can't eat or sleep. I miss her so bad, but I'm repulsed by her at the same time. I told her to not even be in the same room as me until she gets tested for STDs. I told her to email her entire family and tell them everything she did. She has a very tight family and this will likely shame her for life. I told her she needs to cut all ties with everyone and burn every bridge, including with the two friends she had that enabled her, if she ever wants to speak to me again. And even then, it's very likely that there's nothing left to save. I feel so alone. I have friends that I've been relying on, but I can't tell if they are being supportive because they want to be and they like to have me around or if they are simply not a-holes. My confidence and self-esteem is shot. I'm doomed to be alone no matter what I do. I was already physically neglected. I am in no condition for a new relationship and there is no way I could handle being intimate with this woman ever again. Everything I had was just ripped away. I need some cheering up. Again, South Jersey slash Philly area. Thanks again for the kind words I've been receiving. Edit. She had sex with the guy from work. I'm done. It's over. I didn't make her write any letters or tell anyone. She can rot for all I care. I'm free from this BS. Anyone for a beer? Edit 2. These posts will be coming down soon as I prepare for divorce. I hope that my story will help someone else get out of a toxic relationship as well. If you would like the name of my main account to keep in touch or just follow the story, PM me. Update 3. The past 7 months have had a lot of ups and downs. I am in a much better place than I used to be, but still on the road to recovery. I go to therapy 3 times a month. I started running and working out frequently. I dropped from 245 pounds in February to 205 pounds this morning. I feel so much more in shape, and for the first time since high school, I feel good about my body. The change has caused me to have to buy all new clothes, so I'm slowly updating my wardrobe and dressing, subsequently feeling better. I have a large pool of friends now. The friends that I spent New Year's Eve with, I hang out with every Tuesday for trivia, and we went to the beach a few times this spring and summer. I practice with my band three times a week now, and our album was just released for free online. We hang out several times a week. My best friend right now is a girl I met on Reddit, unrelated to these posts. We text every day and hang out every other night, and if one of us is absent for more than two days, we miss each other a lot. I took a trip to Puerto Rico with my mom and my aunt back in May, and it was a life-changing experience. No sightseeing or touristing. My mom grew up there, and we were visiting family. I got to experience the real culture and my heritage. I currently live in a predominantly white suburb, and when I came back, I was much more calm and finally had a positive outlook on life. As for my ex, the easiest, cheapest, and most painless way for us to divorce is on irreconcilable differences. For my state, that requires 18 months of living in separate residencies while not having sex with each other. No problem there. Six months down, 12 to go. I look forward to the day she no longer disgraces my last name. There is so much that she is lying to me about, and so much I will never know the truth about. For a while, we talked about spending time apart and after a while to see if there was something there to save. She called me to meet with her a few months later, and after a long and deceitful amount of small talk, she told me she had given up. She no longer wanted me back. She had quit therapy, and I know for a fact she is currently dating one of the guys she cheated on me with. 
To be honest, good for her. She will either wake up one day and realize how much better her life could have been with me, or she'll have a better life with this guy. Either way, I never would have wanted to hold her back from a higher state of happiness. In the meantime, I never want to see her again, outside of a courtroom. To cope with my deflated ego, I went through a period of sexual promiscuity. I picked up some self-help books, hit up r slash seduction, and took my new body to college parties. I went on dates with old friends that I hadn't seen in five years. I slept around with girls as old as 30 and as young as 18. To be perfectly honest, none of that made me feel any better. I thought that I wanted to feel young again and sow my wild oats, but the truth is, I just wanted to be loved. So, I'm actually dating someone right now. We connect deeply on a mental and physical level, and being with her makes me feel like I can love again. She lives an hour away, which I find to be a good thing because it keeps this from turning into a codependent relationship. I retain my independence while still having someone who cares for me and goes out with me a few times a week. Will it last? Don't know, don't care. Living in the moment has been one of my coping mechanisms this year, so long as I live responsibly. When I'm with her, I'm happy, and that's all I care about. So, this is getting long, but I wanted to thank all of the supportive commenters on Reddit. Many of you offered good advice that I took to heart, and some of you even reached out to me on Facebook. I may have been slightly jaded at the time, but the show of compassion and empathy from strangers has been truly heartwarming. I like the new me, and I hope to be better for the experience. You know, someone commented in a previous video about cheaters, and they said, you know, what if cheaters are just emotionally stunted? What if something's wrong with their brain? And you know what? Maybe they are, because they're just terrible people. If you're not happy with the person, or if you want to fool around, then go leave. Or be like, hey, can we do one of those open relationships? And then your partner will be like, no, that's dumb. And then you leave. But God, 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 cheating's gross. But you know what? I am so happy for OP that he did not allow this to eat him up inside. And I'm glad that we got a, what, seven month later update? So he's had plenty of time to improve himself, and he has. So it seems like everything's on the up and up. Good for him. Story number two. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay the friend who paid for my wedding dress? Hey Reddit, I was looking to buy this dress from a brand in New York City. Because I'm not based there, the only option was to go through a retailer where I'm based at and that would cost me $2,400 excluding alterations. I found a listing from Still White and it was the exact dress I wanted in my size and brand new. The previous owner had cancelled her wedding and it was for $900. My longtime friend from school, Serena, who happened to be in New York at the time, agreed to pick it up for me and bring it back with her to where I'm based, where she's also from. I was really grateful and happy, and I was even intending to gift her $100 on top of the Uber rides to slash from the place. I said I would reimburse her as my token of appreciation. However, my joy turned to shock, horror, dismay, and disbelief when I saw Serena's Instagram story showcasing her trying on my wedding dress. I called her out for it, telling her I wasn't happy that she not only tried it on without my permission, but posted it for the public to see. She didn't take it down, even after a conversation we had about this. To make matters worse, she admitted that she collected the dress posing as me. Through an email bill later, I noticed that the dress had also been altered, what? On the spot, all without my knowledge or consent. When confronted, Serena nonchalantly stated that it was her one chance to try a wedding gown and insisted that I should get over it and reimburse her the $900 she paid for the dress. My wedding dress experience was entirely hijacked, and I'm now hesitant to pay her back. This all happened yesterday, and she reached out today to ask for the money back and told me to get over it because she needs to make a purchase for tomorrow and it would help her cash flow. But since she wants the dress so bad, she can have it. So, am I the a-hole? Here is a relevant comment asking what kind of alterations can be done on the spot. It was a waste alteration. For context, this bridal shop has a seamstress in-house, and for dresses to be bought off the rack, they offer on-the-spot alterations unless it is significant. In this case, it was the waste. Update 1. First of all, thank you everyone for being so empathetic and indignant on my behalf. I don't feel crazy anymore. When I saw her post, I completely lost it, and I cried so pathetically. 
I know everyone must be wondering why I am even friends with Serena and how that reflects on me as a person too. Serena and I go a long way back. I have always known Serena is a terrible friend, but I still kept her around because of her mental health struggles. I was the only friend connected to her family, so if anything, I would have been the one to sound the alarm. I don't think I could have lived with the guilt if anything really happened to Serena. But I guess my job is done, because Serena's audacity tells me she's in a much better place. Good for her. Moving forward, I don't have the dress on hand yet, because it's still in New York with her. She is coming back to where we are based on February 24th. I agree that she was doing me a favor, and for that, I think I will still pay her for the dress. After all, it is $900, but with the following terms. One, I will only pay her upon receipt of the dress. The trust is completely broken. I don't know what else she might do to the dress. Sleep in it? I unfortunately need this leverage over her until I have it in my hands. Else, she has no incentive to keep her hands off of it. For all I know, she chucked it in dusty storage to spite me. 2. I will pay her the $900 minus the cost of dry cleaning and alterations. It's like borrowing a friend's clothing and not washing it before returning it. Did I also mention that she tried it after her Pilates class without taking a shower? Oh boy. I think this arrangement is fair and I would not owe her anything. 3. I will end this friendship. To be honest, I think if Serena and I met as adults, we wouldn't be friends. The friendship has ran its course, and I think I did the best I could. She for real said I'm pulling an Anna Sorkin on her. Serena called me a con artist and isn't even sorry that she rained all over my parade. Friend? Human? 4. She's uninvited. Need I say more? Update 2. Serena had actually told me there was lipstick stains on the dress and offered to buy a stain pen. Later, I found out from the shop owner that the stains were actually caused by Serena. So, Serena not only lied blatantly, but tried to cover up her own vile behavior by coming across as helpful. I have since reverted to Serena and gave Serena two options. One, sell it to me at half the cost to cover alterations and dry cleaning, or two, sell it to someone else. She chose option two and showed no true remorse. End of story and end of friendship. Serena, baby girl, you good? I know that some women get a little wedding crazy, but this ain't your wedding, this ain't your dress, and I feel like you're just crazy all the time. Also, I don't know about you guys, but if I was in OP shoes and I saw that photo of her on Instagram wearing my dress, that would have been the immediate point where I would have been like, nope, not paying for it. You can have it. Screw you. You put on another woman's wedding dress for the gram. Really? On your story too? It's gone in 24 hours. Was it worth it, Serena? No. All right. I'm done. Bye. Thank you for watching.